Hello, everyone. What you're about to see is a work in progress. It's a real-time live storytelling collaboration with AI. The story is about Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage, and Ada's vision that one day machines could be used to create art. I'll be inputting prompts that will guide the AI in generating images. And I will be using voice cloning technology and a camera monitoring my action in order to bring the characters to life. So, here we go. Imagination is the discovery faculty. These are the words of Countess Ada Lovelace, aristocrat, mother, mathematician, and visionary. Welcome to London. It is Wednesday, June 5th, 1833. That's Ada. She's 17 years old and on her way to a party at Dorset House, located in one of the better parts of the metropolis. As a countess, she has met many of the celebrities of the day. But today, she would meet a man who shared her love of science. For this is the home of Charles Babbage. Babbage was 42 when he met Ada, a scientist obsessed with numbers. He was the author of a book about the calculation of insurance premiums and another about the decline of science. And now he had a new project, a calculating machine. My dear Countess, I'm glad you appreciate the value of such a machine. And yet, I seem to live in a country that is incapable of estimating it. That is true. We overrate what we find remarkable and underrate those notions that will surpass what we praise. Babbage shared his plans for the difference engine and Ada immediately saw its possibilities. Others did not. I liked Mr. Babbage immensely. He saw mathematics in everything. And so did I. In 1837, Victoria became Queen of England and Charles Babbage devised a new calculating machine. It used punch cards to guide his computations. It was a mechanical marvel of cocks and wheels, a machine for processing numbers way beyond anything that had been attempted before. Not many people understood the concept. One fellow asked me to explain the principle of the machine in two words. And what were they? The method of differences. That's four words. I can see why people were confused. Babbage's life was a turbulent mix of hope and failure. He failed to sell his machines to industry and government. He had always despaired about the lack of scientific progress. Now he despaired about his inability to convince the world that they needed his analytical engine. In 1843, a new opportunity came to publicize the analytical engine. The Italian mathematician Luigi Federico Menebrea had written a paper about Babbage's machine. Countess Lovelace translated my paper into English because she believed it would draw attention to the engine in England. She expounded on the professor's ideas and suggested that such an instrument could do more than calculate numbers. It could be not just a scientific tool, but a creative one. It was no mere calculating machine. Imagine an engine that create art or music, compose elaborate concertos, sonatas, arias of any degree or complexity. The possibilities are endless. Ada wrote what many consider to be the first computer algorithm. And in doing so, Ada Lovelace became the world's first computer programmer. Mathematics is the unseen relationship between things. To see them, we need our imagination. It is poetical science. The analytical engine weaves algebraical patterns, just as the jacquard loom weaves flowers and leaves. For some time, Ada had been in ill health. Laudanum was her medication. 
Her correspondence is filled with metaphor, philosophy, and grand dreamlike visions. Imagination, she said, is the key to discovery. Those who've learned to walk on the threshold of the unknown worlds may then, with their fair white wings of imagination, hope to soar further into the unexplored amidst which we live. I am more than ever now the bride of science. Now Ada made Babbage a proposal to fund the building of the analytical engine. But Babbage, with the same stubbornness he had exhibited throughout his life, refused her offer. The analytical engine was never completed. Ada Lovelace died in 1852, age 37. But her optimism could not be crushed. She truly believed her ideas would live on. That brain of mine is something more than merely mortal, as time will show. Ada Lovelace brought her imagination to bear upon the mechanical. And where others saw problems, she saw a machine that could change the world. That world is now here. A world where science and art melt, where human imagination combined with technology gives us the means and the power to transform everything around us. Thank you, Ada for the foresight that many lacked and the vision you shared. You truly are the enchantress of numbers. All right, thank you. Right, for those of you who might not be as au fait with AI, that presentation was unbelievably powerful. Those gestures being recognized by the camera and then analyzed and generating AI visuals on the spot. There's so much calculation here. My mind was blown and the AV people and I were just <laughs> gobsmacked the whole time going, what? How is this even real? So, Marco, that was incredible. What is the workflow of the technology that you're using? Tell us all about it. Well, thank you very much for the kind <laughs> remarks. So I'm using a laptop, and I know it looks a little bit glitchy. That's kind of by design. I want my work to be inspirational for younger artists. So I try to use it on the smallest possible platform. I'm running a local image model here. I'm using Comfy UI. It's an open source tool, mm -hmm. which I wired a few extra magical things into. <laughs> if you look at the screen right now, if we still see it, there's a, there's a bunch of prompts which guide the story. And these prompts are fed at certain moments to the image engine, which then creates the images based and guided on what this little camera here sees. Right. The voices uh, are actually my voices. I pipe them through a, a voice cloning model. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to be all these historic characters. No, it was amazing. So this is all what I, I'm kind of going to guess this just to translate for the audience. You have a timeline where there are pre-programmed. At this point, you will sound like this person. Exactly. And at this point, you're going to sound like the other person. And at this point, you're going to create something based. That's amazing. And it's going to change the face of storytelling. So my next question is, probably you're going to know the answer to this. Why? Why would you make something like this? You mentioned young people. Right. So like, first of all, it's fun. Like These yes. tools are available to pretty much everyone right now. So it's super democratized. Everyone can play. Mm -hmm. And I with my work, try to inspire people to come along and play. I think AI is, for the very first time, a tech which we all talk about upon its arrival. And we all have a little bit of a say, I guess, thinking naively in influencing the trajectory of where this might go, especially for people like me or somewhere in that intersection between art or story and maybe even magic. Right? Yes, I, I definitely think as a use case, this is a real kind of, it's very engaging. Um, if like me, you would like to have a go on this device, can you just raise your hands just, just as a quick look? Yes, you see, it's a really popular idea. A last question for you, what's next for you? Are you going to develop this further or what, what, what's happening? 
I think the next thing is um, kind of doing a little bit of tech watch and seeing what else systems like this could inhabit. I'm thinking robotics will be a really interesting topic. There's okay. lots of interesting experiments going on. And then, of course, anything that has, is even remotely related with our stories, our narratives, should be explored. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Marco. Thank you, you very much for having me. It's Marco Tempest, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Wow. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you.